Hey, what's going on guys? It's Cole here, and today I'm bringing you a quick video on how to play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on PC using the Project 64 emulator. There are a lot of ways to play this game on PC nowadays, and if you're looking for something that is true to the original N64 experience, this is as close as you are going to get, as you are literally emulating the original experience. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is open up your file explorer and wherever you plan on putting this, make a folder and name it whatever you want. This is just a general folder for the emulator. If you only plan on playing this for Ocarina of Time, feel free to name the folder just Ocarina of Time. Otherwise, if you think you might use this for other N64 titles, then feel free to just name it something like Project 64 or N64 emulator. Something that you'll remember it and somewhere where you know where it is. Next, you will want to head over to Project 64's website and download the emulator from them. When you download it, it's going to come in a setup exe. Right here, I'm supposed to agree to allow it to access my system. But once you get in, click next. It'll ask you where you want to put it, say browse, navigate your way to wherever the folder is that you want to drop it, select that folder, click OK. And then here, what I do is I highlight the extra part and I take it out because I don't want an extra subfolder within that. I just want a folder called Project 64 with it in it. Feel free to create a desktop icon if you want it. Other than that, just click next. And when it finishes up, make sure that you leave the box checked to open it and click finish. The first two things that's going to ask you are what language you want to have it in. So make sure that it's in whatever your native language is. And as well as that, we're gonna make another folder in our Project 64 folder called games. And for the game directory, hit the three dots, scroll down to wherever that folder is and select it. This is the folder that it's going to pull all of our game files from. So this is where later we're gonna drop the Ocarina of Time files into. Once you've done that, just select the option for modern PCs if that's what you have, or the option for an older PC if that's what you have. Click through and the emulator will now be installed and open. So once we're here, we're gonna to wanna to open up that games folder and we're gonna to want to put a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time ROM into there. I cannot share you a source or the ROM file itself as that would be illegal, but source this yourself, make sure it's not sketchy, and make sure it's legal. But once you have this file, you might need something like WinRAR to open it if it's a zip, but just drag the ROM into the games folder and you will see that it automatically appears in the Project 64 menu. Now that we have the game file in there, we're going to set up the emulator to the more specific things. So go to the options drop down and select graphics to begin with. The first thing that you're going to see on the left hand side is your full screen resolution. Set this to whatever you want the resolution to be while you're in full screen mode. You can also set the windowed resolution to whatever you want it to be when it's minimized. The aspect ratio, I highly recommend leaving at 4x3. If you widen it out, it's going to stretch it and it's just not going to look right for any of these games that aren't meant for it. So I really don't recommend increasing this. Other than that, we have anti-aliasing over on the right side. I recommend turning this on, but only to like the two times setting. This is just gonna smooth out edges. But if you turn it up too high, then everything's gonna look really rounded out and nothing's gonna look really sharp. So I recommend giving it a little bit of smoothing, but not much. Below that, you're gonna see an option for anisotropic filtering. This is essentially sharpening up the textures. So depending on your own personal preference, you may or may not want to do this. It's a difference you'll barely notice, but if you want a little bit of extra sharpness in those textures, feel free to crank it up. If you want something sharper, but not too sharp, put it in the middle. If you think it's fine without it, you want a true to the original experience, just leave it off. Below that, there are some dithering effects if you want to play around with that. I recommend leaving it on the blue noise. This just gives it that little bit of like dithering effect that it would have playing on an old TV, like a CRT of the time. So I recommend leaving this as it is. And once we finished up there, we can tab over to the emulation tab. The only thing here that I would really play around with would be the per pixel lighting. If you have a higher end PC, turn it on. Otherwise, leave it off. You could go for it on an older PC and it probably wouldn't be too bad. But generally speaking, it's probably best to leave it off. And once we've done those things, we're really done in the graphics settings. You can see me tabbing around here a bit, but just hit save and close and let's move on to the audio options. In here, it's plain and simple. It's just an audio slider. If it's too loud, you can lower it but that's about it. Moving into the input settings, this is also very easy. It might look overwhelming at first, but it's very, very simple. This is how you set up the controls. It gives you the N64 controller layout, and there are these little gray boxes to the side. You click that, you click the button you wanna use for it, and it'll set it right there for you. It'll bind it to whatever you tell it to. 
If you plan on playing on mouse and keyboard, you can just press keys. If you wanna use your mouse, you can click on there. If you wanna use a controller and you have it plugged in, you just hit the button on the controller you wanna bind it to, and it really is that simple. For me, I play on a PS5 controller, so if you're using any sort of modern controller like this, you'll probably want your input settings to look pretty much like mine do here. Once again, hit apply and okay. And once we've done all this, the emulator is completely set up. You can double click on the game listed in the menu and it will launch it. At first, it'll be in a little window. If you want to put it into full screen, click into the window and hit alt and enter on your keyboard at the same time. And there you go. You'll be playing Ocarina of Time in full screen with whatever you want your controls to be, just like that. So I hope this video helped you guys. If you have any further questions, if something went wrong along the way, if you just need extra clarification on something, feel free to comment that down below and I will answer as soon as I can. If the video did end up helping you, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like or a sub on it. This isn't exactly the largest project I've worked on recently, but I do cover a lot of other gaming content and if any of it seems interesting to you, I would really appreciate it. And speaking of other gaming content, I have a 100% completion guide in the works for this game right now. If you're catching this video later after I upload it, there's a good chance that it'll already be up on the channel. And if that's the case, it'll be linked in the top right hand corner of the video in the cards and in the description down below. So feel free to check that out if you think that would be of use to you. And once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to see all of you guys back here next time. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the video and goodbye.